Hello, and welcome to the latest episode of Zach's Tech Talk Tuesday. I'm your host, as always, Ryan McQueenie, and today we are putting the spotlight on the tech behemoths of the world now that CES 2019 has wrapped up, and we can start to see what these big companies were really up to in the desert this year. In many ways, CES is for smaller companies to shine and show off their new gadgets and gizmos. It's the largest consumer electronics trade show in the world. And if you bring a cool new gizmo, if you will, I can't think of a better word for it. We'll touch on a few examples. But if you bring something cool to CES, it's a great place to get to get international media spotlight. Um, you know, if you are one of these smaller startups or smart, smaller kind of inventors, if you will. Um, this year, there was, and really there never has been, a shortage of these gadgets. Uh, we saw bread making robots, a full mouth scrubber. I wouldn't even call it a toothbrush, really a full mouth cleanser that cleans your teeth in 10 seconds and everything to the latest advancements in mobile breast pumps, which really made their mark on CES two years ago and are, are now a staple of the consumer electronics show. But the big guys certainly do the best they can to steal the show from these smaller gadgets. For instance, this CES saw Amazon and Google take their fight for virtual assistant supremacy to the next level. Really, Google was everywhere with the Google Assistant this year. The Hey Google starting phrase or tagline was, from the looks of it, everywhere on the Vegas Strip, including on the city's monorail system and above a main entrance a main entrance to the convention center all week long. Google also did the same thing it did last year, which is to unleash a small army of human Google assistants on the conference floor, sporting all white and donning the Hey Google catchphrase. The walking advertisements helped attendees work the growing number, the company's growing number of connected hardware devices. Uh, lots of new Google Assistant um, powered things to play with this year at CES. Amazon, on the other hand, brought a much smaller presence to the convention uh, with just two main booths for new products on CES's main floor this year. The booths were there to show off Amazon Ring and Amazon Key, two new Alexa-powered hardware devices that work to flesh out the e-commerce company's whole home hardware offerings. Attendees reported that these booths didn't feel fully repaired and not all features were available in demos. Amazon had two other booths for older products, including auto and echo devices. But via The Verge, an Amazon spokesperson said this was the company's, quote, first ever public presence at CES and that it took, quote, a different approach from other companies. Amazon's executive at the event argued that customers simply don't care about a huge ad bank campaign on the Las Vegas Strip. Kind of a direct shot there at Google Assistant. It was feisty, um, and that kind of makes sense. Google went all out promoting the Google Assistant stuff. Amazon did bring Alexa and showed it off here and there. Didn't go too crazy with it. Didn't spend too much money on it. And uh, Amazon took a a much more minimal, minimalist approach to talking about it and said, look, you know, this isn't our targeted audience for who we want to buy the products. Everybody already knows about Alexa. Probably we don't, we don't need the buzz that this is going to capture. Whereas Google, which technically has 10 times more devices connected to Google assistant because it includes every um, Android device on, on that list um, still feels like it has to catch up to Alexa in terms of just everyday cultural relevance. Um, you know, I think Hey Google is catching on and growing, but um, the Alexa phrase, the Alexa name, still feels like it is is the first one we think of when we think of these virtual assistants and these home automation devices. Elsewhere, chip wars were taking place. Intel scored probably the biggest reveal. In the, chip space with, in the chip space with the details of its upcoming Ice Lake processor, a 10 nanometer computer chip. This is going to be a big thing for laptop manufacturers who will now have an even smaller, beastly chip to include in their devices. True specs and release dates are still some time away, but Intel scored another big win in terms of clout with its Ice Lake reveal at CES. 
Um, AMD kind of shot right back at Intel uh, just before CES, actually. Amazon, A- AMD, excuse me, AMD unveiled second gen Ryzen mobile notebook processors that rely on a 12 nanometer manufacturing process. Uh, and then all eyes were on AMD CEO Lisa Su's Wednesday CES keynote. Su has become kind of a cult hero in the eyes of AMD investors and fans of the company's gadgets and, and hardware. Uh, Su disclosed that the company's first third-gen Ryzen desktop CEOs, which rely on a 7 nanometer process and are seen as competitive with Intel's 10 nanometer process, will arrive in mid-2019. C- C- the CEO, Lisa Su, also said that AMD's next-gen Zen 2 CPU core architecture will arrive in mid-2019 as well. And then NVIDIA, the other one of the other major chip manufacturers at the show, decided to make its annual kickoff all about gaming. CEO Jensen Huang has made a tradition out of starting the event with a big speech on Sunday night, that's exactly what he did just over a week ago. The biggest detail in, in, in NVIDIA's even uh, in vet event was the reveal of low-priced RTX graphic cards. Uh, it's going to be called the RTX 2060 line. Huang also noted that 40 new laptops in over 100 configurations will be powered by laptop versions of NVIDIA's 2060, 2070, and 2080 RTX graphics cards. Those are all coming by the end of this month, Huang described this as NVIDIA redefining mobile gaming. So clearly a focus on the new smaller nanometer technology from Intel and AMD trading blows on the um, kind of notebook focus processor world and NVIDIA saying, you guys can have that. We're focusing on gaming graphics, but we are also taking that mobile approach and we're focusing on laptop focus mobile graphics so really interesting stuff from intel nvidia and amd but ready to steal the show with very little actual ces presence and no major press events were apple and samsung and this really had all to do for both of them and had all to do or a lot to do with tvs and that probably deserves a quick explanation tvs are really always a huge hit at ces Um, thinking back to the early days of CES, but also now in this new generation of television where the Sonys and LGs of the world are always trying to one-up each other with new smart TVs and flexing their new smart TV technology every single year. Interestingly, Apple, which never has an actual presence at at CES, has never had a, a major press event, doesn't bring any booths, and that's because it's Apple, prefers to own its own events, um, it made TV news. It made it made news in this TV space. Um, it, it apparently is starting to let TV makers such as LG and Vizio access its AirPlay and HomeKit technology. And it also made some news by teaming up with Samsung. All of Samsung's 2019 TVs will come with iTunes built in. So that was really interesting news. And I think it caught some eyes at CES because cozying up to TV makers seems like exactly what you do. If you are about to release the long rumored video streaming service that everyone has been talking about with Apple for years, will they officially do that? Do it? Will they officially uh, pick a different direction? We'll see probably very shortly. Apple has, of course, made a lot of huge monetary investments in original content recently. You know, I think it's going down the content path. Obviously, the Apple TV is a major. Um, cord cutting hardware device this airplay technology in other tvs will mean um, for the first time you know people using lg and vizio tvs will be able to directly stream something from an apple device onto the tv it's very much like how google chromecast works except for instead of needing an additional hardware device to plug into your tv in this case it'll be you know already all within the hardware itself. So some interesting moves for Apple. Um, And of course, as I mentioned, part of that was a deal with Samsung, letting iTunes be on all of Samsung's new line of TVs. Samsung added to this news by setting a bunch of its own dates that really got people talking at CES. And again, as I said, kind of stole the show from the people who were actually there. 
Um, Samsung said it'll launch its next flagship phone on February 20th in San Francisco. That's just ahead of the Mobile World Congress trade show in Barcelona, another major, major event uh, over on the smartphone side. This is going to probably be the Galaxy S10, which is one of the most anticipated new devices of the year. Really, the latest additions to the Galaxy S line are always among the most anticipated new phones of the year. We'll see if Samsung takes any notes from Apple, um, which obviously you know released three new phones, including a lower-priced version of its core model with its latest release line, um, perhaps getting some indications from Apple that that wasn't the best idea with its first guidance cut in over a decade and a half. So maybe Samsung will take a note there and, and, and not do um, something like that. Um, we haven't known Samsung to be a follower at all times of, of Apple. We haven't known Apple to be at all times a follower of Samsung. At times, of course, all companies in the smartphone space are taking notes from each other. So we'll see exactly what Samsung is planning to do with the Galaxy S line and maybe anything else on February 20th. As I said, in San Francisco, may we even get the official deets, more details on the the uh, coveted um, flip phone. It's this smart screen, touch screen, Samsung flip phone that everyone's been talking about for years. We will see. Um, but that's it. That's all I want to talk about with CS. I, mean, I could go for hours and hours and hours about the smaller, cool gadgets that I mentioned. I mean, I would say if you're, if you're still interested, check out the bread making robots thing. That was very, very cool. The the tooth the full mouth toothbrush I, I noted is 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 certainly very cool, um, but for us I think it's just easier and a little bit more achievable. Just look at what the tech behemoths were up to this year at CES, why they were doing what they were doing, um, why some companies were kind of going head to head with other companies, why some companies decided to sit on the sidelines this year. Uh, a lot of interesting a lot of interesting stuff as always from CES. Um, but that's going to do it for us this week. As a reminder, if you feel that you missed something or if you want us to cover a different story, shoot me an email at podcast at zax.com. Make sure to check out all of our other audio content at zax.com slash podcasts. Remember to subscribe and leave us a rating on Apple Podcasts if you enjoyed the show. Uh, we are also available on SoundCloud, Spotify, Stitcher, and the like. Find us there if you prefer to use those outlets for your podcast listening. And as always, thank you so much for listening to the Zach's Tech Talk Tuesday show. We'll see you next time.